You've been nothing but a thorn in my side since day one. Mm -hmm. But I am in Tokyo, the great and I'll not ha, be outdone. Welcome to Fan Tokyo Spectacular. Enter in the pound. Please excuse my thespian vernacular when I say thou is going down. I've had enough of you. is thirsty for fun time to run cause now your denouement has already begun that means you're done we could both be pirates on the sea you'll swap the deck and play a part for me mobs galore you better keep it clean watch out now my little friend cause shark is looking mean i've had enough of you so Here's another. At least you'll get to see defeat in epic style. The audience is primed. Each attack right on time. Seeing you in twine is so worthwhile. But why stop there at a lion, a bear? What's wrong, my petty chair? Why don't you smile? The final act is sure to be a theatrical plot twist worthy of a prize want a shot you better be more tactical messing with fan tokyo is never wise i've had enough of you so Learn to love it. Every word I say, you'll come and start. 
flame spreads. How do you do secret rolls again? Normally there's a tower, but... Gotcha. Hey, Shim. What was the dice roll again for uh, your soccer? to enable the uh, tower. Welcome to the stream. I am Raw Zim, and this is our first stream of Darkest Dreams World of Darkness. I will turn it over to Timmy now, the DM for this group, to explain a little bit and get us uh, and set the scene and such. Greetings, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the game. Uh, welcome to the World of Darkness. For those who do not know, the World of Darkness is very similar to our own. It is a place of science, of technology. People don't believe in monsters. Monsters aren't real. There's no such thing as vampires, werewolves, ghosts, and any other such creatures. Except there are. Vampires prowl the streets at night, hunting and manipulating society from behind the scenes. Dark spirits are bent on dragging the world into decay, rot, and oblivion. Ghosts, unable to rest, constantly prowl the underworld, seeking entry into our world to accomplish whatever goals they wish. And even more things lurk in the darkness. The world is like our own, but more of a dark mirror, where things are a little less well off. People are a little poorer, people care a little less, and more and more people just seem to vanish every night. Welcome to the world of darkness. Now, before we begin, though, I wish to turn it over a little bit to my players. Please, each of you, introduce your characters to us. Let us know who you are. Who wishes to start for us? I say we start I... uh, with the first one in the upper left there and move our way over. So, Zerth. Tell me of yourself. Give our listeners a little bit of a snapshot of who you are. The, the name's Reykjavik. Reykjavik the Terror. You can call me Reik. Friends call me Reik. Most friends call me Reik. I don't have many friends. He's so Randall. I don't know who calls me that. Anyway, I'm a hunter here out to kill the beasties of the bad, the worst. Eh, kind of mediocre good, depending on what my fancy is. I'm a Avenger. Kill him fast, kill him hard. That's what I'm about. And I Thank punch you. things. Punch things a lot. 
love the punching things. Zizen, please introduce yourself to us. My name is Zizen. I am just a kid. Just a kid, mostly. Sure, I live on the streets, but some people watch out for me. Some people care about me. Well, maybe not care about me, Our illustrious champion but they care about my magic. Welcome home. For I am a mage. Thank you, Zizen. Bren! Bren here. I'm more or less just a wannabe college student. I'm too busy to actually do any of the classes, and thus I just kind of go about my night and day jobs, which happen to be a lovely office job somewhere during the day, and at night, a mage that does a task for whoever needs it, as long as I get paid. Thank you, friend. Sky, your turn. Ah, uh, yes, hello. My name is Sky. I am a rather new initiate to the Tremere clan. I've been brought on by the great and glorious Lord Byron, who has been so kind as to turn me and I have been tasked to essentially find out the technologies of this world being that he is so very far out in the world being thousands of years old thank uh, you oh, oh, if you oh, mind. No. Oh, no. I was just going to thank you vampire and Frost, it is your turn. I'm not really sure what to say. Just introduce your character. Introduce you. Alright. Frost, werewolf. Uh, you're breaking out a little bit. Alright. Odd socks? Th that do anything? Uh, you're go. coming through clear now. Nice. <sighs> right. Frost. I'm up, and I'm a werewolf. His name isn't Frost, it is Lord Fluffykin's Destroyer of All. It is indeed Frost. Ignore them. And Cody. Uh, Discord, what are you doing? Machine spirits have betrayed you. Apparently. Because it just randomly was doing the... It, 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 you know how on Windows 10 there's a progress bar sometimes on the icon, usually when you're downloading something? Maybe it was downloading an update. That That's probably yeah, what it was. Oops. I was just very confused because I saw it, you know, doing the over and over thing, and I'm like, uh... Anyways, hello everyone, I am Cody Taylor, brother to Randall, who insists on being called... What was it again, bro? Gregovic the Terror. Don't call me Randall, I hate that name. Yeah, he's Randall. Um, uh, we've got our pet wolf, uh, Lord Fluffykin's Destroyer of All. Uh, Frost. That's what I said. No, it was not. Uh, I am a uh, R and D. Uh, I work in R and D for Pentex, and uh, basically, 
I've got a nice little home in the suburbs, and I support uh, Randall, who can barely even manage to shower on his own. Faucets and are complicated. No, they're they're really not. They're, they're not. Just yeah. Anyways, uh, my brother and I are both hunters. We've got our pet wolf, uh, the uh, Lord Fluffykins, uh, and yeah. Hi, everyone. Let us dive right into this adventure, then, now that we have introductions out of the way. Let us begin, then. First... With Sky. Sky, it is a nice weekend night. It is busy as all hell, of course. People are out partying, trying to forget the terrors and troubles of the week. What are you up to on this fine evening, though? The sun has just set maybe a half hour ago. Well, tonight seems like, as usual, a wonderful night to visit the club. I do believe that the Sixth Circle is quite welcoming for the people of my kind. Indeed, in the city of Empty Springs, Colorado, the Sixth Circle is probably the premier club of the supernatural variety. Many, many mortals, of course, are welcomed in, but it is the place to be if you're one of these supernatural. It is run by a man known as Alric Benerit. A uh, well-known man. He has been really running this club in various names and guises over the last four or five centuries. Uh, he's been here for who knows how long. But his club is considered neutral territory. To the vampires, it is known as Elysium. No harm may be done to any supernatural creature under his roof. And people can meet and discuss things there, knowing that they are safe under his Tales banner. Of our endeavors proliferate. You wish to head to the club then? On this busy Saturday night? Yes. As you are making your way there, how do you go? Do you have a car? Do you walk? Motorcycle, perhaps? Or do you take public transportation? Uh, tonight feels like a good night. I will take the chauffeur as of uh, Lord Byron. Of course. As one of the premier lords of the city, he is filthy stinking rich. And, of course, he avails his loyal subject with whatever they need in order to do their task correctly. He's more than happy to supply you with a chauffeur to drive you around. But as you are being driven to the club, your cell phone begins to ring. Uh, yes, uh, hello? This is Sky. Ah, Sky. I wish I could call you under better circumstances. You recognize this voice. Smooth, calm. This is Auric's voice. Where the hell did he get your phone number? It would not be too surprising. I am a regular of the club after all i'm um, sure at one point or another uh, i would have exchanged my contact information can you tell 
when you're listening to his voice, though, despite the demeanor he's sort of putting on, there's an edge to it. Uh, what seems to be the issue, Alric? You seem to be uh, not uh, nearly as composed as you normally are. He lets out a sigh. Prince Danis is dead. Prince Jacob Danis was the vampire in charge of running Empty Springs, Colorado. He was a Ventru, one of the considered nobility clans. They are the clans that like to consider themselves to be in charge. Many of them are princes or take other leadership roles throughout different human cities in charge of ensuring that vampires do not get too loud and do not overhunt and draw attention to themselves. Mm, this is most unfortunate news. Uh, I do believe this will cause great unrest within the clans. What concerns me, though, is through one of my contacts, I was able to view his last moments. He wasn't murdered. He walked out into the sunlight and burned to death. Oh my. This couldn't possibly be his doing, do you think? I've known Jacob for around a century since he came here. He never struck me as this sort of type. Not when he's been able to get more and more power over the last few years. I will have to inform Lord Byron if he does not already know. He will undoubtedly be able to put some resources into looking into this situation. I would also like to ask if you could come over to the club. There's a few things I wish to ask you about, if you might be able to assist me with a few things. Oh, what the, what a coincidence. I was actually already on my way over there. Excellent. I have a few others coming, and I wish to talk to all of you once you arrive. Um... Come to the third floor. The bouncers will allow you through. And we will speak in my private office. All right, then. I will see you in... Let's see... 20 or so minutes, it would appear. Excellent. I will look forward to seeing you, Sky. And he will hang up. Scene transition. Bren, what are you up to on this fine evening? I'm already at the club because if my stalker is trying to follow me, then I will beat them to the punch. Oh, darling, there you are. Oh, it's so good to see you. A man wearing horrifically flamboyant clothing comes literally strutting through the crowd, and it just seems to part around him as he walks towards you. His skin is pale, like porcelain, 
and he has short black hair and vivid green eyes as he just looks at you with a very wide smile on his face. And you can see his fangs show up for a moment before they vanish. You know, normally luck is much more on my side than tonight. I'm going to kind of try to hide in the booth I'm in, pretend I didn't hear him. Darling, don't be like that. Please, please, come, come. We could have a dance. We could have a drink. The whole night is young. There's so much for us to do. As he calmly struts over to your table and puts his hands on it and leans forward, slightly staring at you. Oh, I would love to, but I'm much too busy tonight. It's a business meeting. I- I'm meeting people. Uh, now, 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 sweetie. Don't be that way. Pleasure before business, after all, you know what I say. No, for, for me it's business. Always business. 200% business. Never once have I just stayed up reading nothing but books for fun. Oh, come now, darling. Come now. I understand you're nervous, but really, once you've tasted the gift of immortality, I promise you, you will never have another boring night, and you will take whatever bliss and joy you can get, and I will give it to you all. Now, what do you say we go to a private room? I got permission and everything. I'm thinking we can have blue for the wedding. I am going to uh, accidentally spill my drink on myself. Oh, I, I, I have to go to the restroom. Um, bye. Try. And try to get away. I will be waiting here for you, darling. Please hurry back. I don't head into the restroom. I try to duck down in the crowd and go to the other side, go to a different floor somewhere but here. As you begin to go, you see Alaric. He is dressed in his fine white business suit. Calmly walk over towards you as you are making your way. And he kind of reaches out to try to grab your arm, if you will allow him to. I mean, I'm kind of in the Skyrim crouch. I'm not really looking at the people. I'm just moving, so I kind of jerk away a moment when he first touches me. Peace. You hear him say, Bren, I'm not going to hurt you, and I will not allow any harm to come to you within my club. Cool. Uh, need me? Let's go. Yeah. And I start leading him somewhere. Anywhere but here. As you see him wave a finger and start to lead you up to the third floor, I have some bad news for you, Bren. I'm used to it. Hit me. Daniel, the leader of your order, apparently committed suicide this morning. There has to be a mistake. That old guy would never go out like that. There's rules to follow. Yeah, apparently he put a gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger, to my knowledge. He didn't even know what a gun was. Do you understand why I have thoughts on this then and why I think there's issues with this story going around. Yeah. Uh, wanting to talk to me somewhere more private? He nods his head as he's taking you. I called a few others in. There's been a rash of this going on over the last three days. I thought it was maybe just one or two just issues coming up, but this is starting to turn into a pattern, and I don't like patterns. He's going to nod, and I'll be right there. I just want to grab a drink to settle myself, if you don't mind. I will have someone get it for you. You have... um... Someone who is currently extolling the virtues of how you and him are going to be a perfect couple to anyone who will listen. To the meeting room it is. Uh, scene transition! 
Cody Frost and Rakovich. Yo. What are you guys up to on this fine, fine evening? Well, uh, have we received any uh, notifications about something to go hunt? Over the last two or three days, you guys have been seeing more and more spiritual activity. Lesser spirits are showing up more and more and causing trouble. This is not something that should be happening usually, especially in like a big, busy city like Empty Springs. Normally the walls for the spirit world are usually very thick here in most places. But you're seeing spirits showing up in like the middle of town and such and causing trouble. That shouldn't happen usually unless some, someone is either calling them or there's a big issue going on. Well, whatever you do, Randall, do not think of the State Puff Marshmallow Man. Uh, see, now that you've said it, I can't stop thinking about that or the Michelin Man. Thanks, brother. Gonna have to relive I, that I just again. told you not to. Yeah, what have we... You tell me not to, and I do it. Like, that's not how this works. Okay. Uh, don't not think of the, uh, Marshmallow Man. Look, we both know I don't know much English, let alone grammar. <sighs> You're the booky one. I'm the punchy one. That's, that's how this works. Somehow. By the way, go get a shower. You still got ectoplasm in your freaking hair. It's a natural hair gel. You should try it sometime. It is, no, it is not. Shower or I'm hosing you down. Remember what happened last time? You're still trying to replace that couch. Frost, get the hose. Boy, if Frost. you want that... <laughs> Odd socks, I grabbed the hose. <laughs> right? Looks, looks towards Frost like, No. Bad. Down. No. Bad boy. Uh-uh. No. Frost looks disappointed. <laughs> uh, uh, Frost, why, why don't you uh, go into your uh, big form so... You can hold him while I hose him down. That'll work better. Frost just looks at you, head tilted, waiting for something. If you hose him, I'll give you a steak. If you hose me, I won't uh, buy any steaks for him to give to you. And you and I both know he ain't got anything to pay for any steaks with. Frost just sighs, turns on the hose, <laughs> and hoses you both. <laughs> God damn it, I stop! Ah. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you play devil's advocate. Oh, now I'm all wet and musky. Blech. Ah, just go take a shower. Hmm. I promise I've got the wards up. There's no water elementals or anything in the hose, in, in the pipes. As you've said that before, and how many times have I had to deal with them? Never here. Mm. I'm watching. The you. hotel is not my fault. I, you're the one that booked it. I told you, do reconnaissance, reconnaissance, reconnaissance. 
They, they said it was a it was a good one. You're gonna listen to the ghoul that can't type. The hunter net is only hunters. Fine, I'll take this bath or shower that you were so raving on. I don't know what you're talking about, smell or ungodly odor. But let's finish this hunt first. Fine. Do 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 do. Cody, your cell phone is ringing. I pull it out of my uh, pocket, uh, trying to uh, shake off some of the water. Yes, hello. Uh, hello there, Cody. Is this a bad time? You recognize this voice. It's Alex's voice from that time you showed up randomly at the club with... You didn't... You still don't know exactly how you just ended up there somehow. Well, right now I'm trying to get uh, Randall to go take a shower. Her name's Reykjavik the Terror. What's up? There is a few issues that I thought you, your brother, and your companion may be able to assist me with. All right, and uh, where, what sort of things are you uh, referring to? I take it you've no thing. Randall, I'm not in the shower already. I take it that you have noticed the increase in spirit activity, both in ghosts and more natural spirits. Yeah, right now uh, we're trying to. Cl I'm trying to get Randall to clean up after the last one we dealt with. <laughs> it's a natural gel. No, no, it's not. He, even he agrees with me. It is not natural. He doesn't know marketing. Actually, yes, I do. Runs a club. Of course, he knows what it is. It's before your time. That is adorable. Anyways, uh, did you? So, what can we uh, do for you then? I was wondering if you wish to come down to my club, please, and have a little discussion. I wish to. I suppose you could say hire you. Are you sure we can't meet somewhere else? It, it's kind of awkward going in there and, you know, sometimes coming face to face with somebody that we hunted or something, you know? My club is neutral ground. If anyone attempts anything there, it will be dealt with immediately. I trust you. It's just still awkward. Can we at least come in a back door or something? <sighs> There's a loading door in the back of the club. You can come in through there. I will have it unlocked. Alright, we'll be over there as soon as possible. Please try and hurry. Frost, you never take me alive! Randall, hurry up! Just get in there and get clean! At least rinse off! We gotta go! Woot! Avoidance! He, uh... He gets a quick shower, but he still comes out smelling heavily of wet dog for some reason. Uh, in that time, uh, Cody has changed into a new outfit, uh, dried himself off and such, uh, and he heads out to his SUV, and we head off to the club. It's 
Scene transition. Zizen, what are you up to? Zizen tonight is actually looking for someone. He's walking down a street, oddly enough, finding himself heading towards a place he's visited recently. He's got his phone out and he's trying to call someone every so often, but he's got no answer so far. So he's got his phone up to his ear and is muttering to himself, Come on, Lucky. Come on, Lucky. Pick up. Pick up. Pick up. The phone continues to ring as you're walking before it picks up and you hear a kid's voice on the other end. What's up? This is Lucky. Lucky. Um, I've got a question for you. I got an answer for you. Lucky, you heard the news going around on the street, right? The mm, what's the news? The death of a vampire? Um, yeah. The death of a vampire who walked into the sun? Yeah, I heard about that. Lucky, was it you? <laughs> he laughs. Why do you think it's me? Sighs and just sighs and says, How many times have you done that in the past? I can neither confirm nor deny such heinous allegations against myself. Just tell me this wasn't you. I will not tell you that it was me. With that, he just hangs up, shakes his head. Ring, ring, ring. Ring, ring, ring. Your cell phone begins to ring, Zizen. And with a sigh, he picks it up and answers. Ah, oh, Lucky. That... Um... No, this isn't Lucky. My name is Auric. You showed up in my club? <laughs> Sorry, I was expecting someone else. Oh, um, it's quite all right. I was curious if you were free this evening. Look. I swear, I was going to return that suit you gave me. It's just no, I need no. to get it cleaned up and You're fine. Don't worry about that. I actually wish to sort of hire you on for a job. There's been some issues around town. And well, I think a major two may be able to help me look into it. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. But I don't really want to talk about it on the phone in here, so... Come to the club. Come through the back entrance. It will be unlocked and open. You'll be able to reach the third floor through the stairwell there. Come up to there to my office. Others will be arriving very shortly, and I will talk to all of you about the business then once you are safe here. Okay. I will see you soon. Be careful. You never know what might be going on out on the streets. That's one of the reasons I want you all here. Believe me, I know what you mean. And with that, he will hang up. He will send a message off to someone saying he's going to be busy for the night. Off to his mentor. Okay. And then he's going to be heading on to the club. Okay. 
Cody, Frost, and Reykjavik, you guys arrive at the back door to the club just as you see a young, familiar boy turn the corner as well. Oh, great, it's you. Hey, Shorty! Zyzan just blinks, looks through at the three before him for a moment, shakes his head. Thought I smelt something that smelt like dead garbage. It's not I that swear. bad. Yes, it is. Yes, 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 it is. No. I don't know what you're complaining. You smell worse than a zombie. I beg to differ on that one. I am not decomposing. Could have fooled me. Hundred and ten percent sure about that. He he looks at himself, shakes his hands. About eighty percent. <sighs> I swear I had him get in the shower before we came. Lies! I swear I'm going to... I, I'm going to get straps, and from now on, you're not allowed to ride in the in the car. You, you Look, ride on top. I... Look, not my fault that a supposed smell destroyed a leather seat. That has no evidence, and you can't prove that in court. It was perfectly fine before you sat down on it! It was still fine. A little squishy, though. While this is going on, Zizan's got to head to the door, leave the brothers to be brothers, hold it open for Lord Fluffy King to walk in with him. <laughs> well, uh... Uh... <laughs> uh... Cody will follow, uh, still arguing with uh, Randall. <laughs> Reich is still arguing with him. It's not that bad. I don't know what you... It does, I don't smell. I don't know what you guys are complaining about. I swear I'm going to get you to a doctor and have your nose fixed. Well, if I did smell him, then this ride right here is going to be a living hell. And he just lifts up his arms and just like, a living hell. <sighs> How did you at least use the deodorant that I gave you? I am too strong and too powerful at this point. <sighs> I swear you killed just with your smell. Uh, if I could only weaponize this so-called smell, oh my god, it'd be unbeatable. You already have! <laughs> he pulls out a little notebook and just writes down, Weaponize biosmell, question mark, and then puts it back into his uh, trench coat. So anyways, uh, we have arrived, and we'll head up to the uh, third floor. There is a stairwell right in the uh, right through the doorway, leading you guys up to a large plush office. And you can see other people who are already there. This office is filled with couches, chairs, a very large desk, and artwork from, like, all different periods in time hanging on the walls. It's really, really nice. Like, way above what a simple club owner should have. Before they fully get up the stairs, they can kind of hear muffled, Oh, what's that smell? Is something burning downstairs? Ah, I believe our guests are about to arrive. I need to deal with that. Even I have limits. Rekovic will kick open the door and is like, no need to fear, I am here. Alaric is sitting behind his desk, joined by Sky and Bren. 
He takes one look at Reykjavik, lifts a hand, stabs his fingers, and suddenly Reykjavik is clean. Perfectly, totally clean. Okay, teach what? me how to do that, and I will do any job you want. What did he do? Wait. He touches his hair. What did you do to my hair? Did you touch my hair? What did you do to my hair? I cleaned you. He doesn't have that good Reykjavik funk anymore. God dang it. That was a tactical error on your part. How else am I going to get the element of surprises against bog witches now? My apologies. However, I judged that as this is neutral territory, you were committing the, uh, the equivalent of olfactory assault upon all of us. So I did what was necessary in order to deal with the issue and defuse the problem. Weaponized stink. I really have to learn how to do that. Personally, I feel quite bad for the werewolves downstairs that had to smell you coming up the back. <sighs> yes, I will Try probably have to make up for this. Try living with it. I'm not that bad. Frog's just nuts. I'm like hypoallergenic or hyperallergic, however you want to say that. Please, please come in, take a seat, everybody. We can get down to discussing business. <laughs> I'll walk in. Uh, uh, Cody will go in and take a seat. Uh, get a little comfortable. These seats are nice. You just sink into them. It's like sitting on a fluffy cloud. Frost loves to sit on the floor. Sizan will find a couch and he'll sit actually on the arm of it, straddling it. He doesn't do chairs. So oh, anyways, floor. you had something for us to uh, discuss. Indeed. Uh, first, I wish to know if you are all up to date on the recent going-ons over the last couple of days. We've had three apparent suicides from different supernatural groups. I've heard. Or you didn't cause it from your smell <laughs> okay look if I could do you think I wouldn't have a better bounty now no god I really have to learn how to weaponize something Ooh, bio punches he takes out his little book and starts writing down again I'm sure we're all aware. Was there something you wanted to elaborate on? Because unless anyone here knows more than I, we all barely knew until today. He'll nod to Brian when he says that. Then, for those who may not know, I will explain. There have been three suicides over the last three days. One at each either evening or morning. Usually at the break of dawn, or at the turn of midnight, so my own studies have told me. <clears throat> the first was a werewolf. I believe it was a warrior of great standing among the Git of Fenris here. Um, I do not know much of him other than his name. Uh... 
Apparently he went by the title uh, Sharp Talon among the werewolves. Uh, Frost, you would recognize that. He was a very powerful warrior and basically the sort of the head of security, not just for the werewolves, but also for all of Empty Springs. If there was an issue, he was usually the guy in charge of dealing with that issue and killing whatever it was. Or leading a group to do it. Quick side tangent, uh, because it was brought up in the chat. Uh, could we explain how magic works in this world with the paradox and stuff real fast? Sure, that's not a problem. So, magic in this system works differently, for those who do not know. Um, for mages, mages are able to use whatever kind of magic that they can imagine, as long as they have, they have what are called spheres. There are nine spheres. The more dots you have in it, from a one to five scale, the more understanding and knowledge you have of that sphere. So when it comes to forces, if you have forces three, you know how to chuck a fireball from your hands, or perhaps call down lightning to smite your enemies. However, magic works because you believe it works. Magic works because that is the way you believe you can alter reality, that you can do magic. So the same, the two different mages will never do the same effect the same way. They just don't believe in the same thing. But when you try and do something that's blatantly impossible, reality tries to punch you back. When you try and grab it and drag it and force it to conform to your will, it doesn't like that. And that's what causes paradox. Paradox is basically you folding up the tapestry of reality and then those knots getting ready to snap back and punch you. The more points of paradox you have, the worse the punch is going to be. Two or three points, well, your hair might turn um, a shade of different rainbow colors. The hands on your watch might run backwards. Or you might find yourself uh, spontaneously breaking into dance every ten minutes. When you start getting into higher paradox, though... Well, you might find your shoe suddenly glued to the floor as the car beside you suddenly explodes and all the shrapnel directed directly towards you. Or a hole in reality opening up and trying to drag you into a spectral realm in order to punish you for your hubris. You know, no big deal. So, doing something as simple as cleaning somebody would be a decent amount of uh, paradox, I believe. If he's a mage. <laughs> Mages are the only ones who get paradox. Because they are the only ones who actually manipulate reality itself to do it. Each group has their own abilities. Vampires have what are called disciplines. Where they are able to manipulate the blood in their bodies in order to do supernatural effects. Like mind control, shape-shifting... Um, enhanced strength, speed, and durability, yeah. or greater senses. Hunters have what are called edges that give them supernatural protection against mind control and mind affecting attacks, or they can hold back supernatural threats or cause their weapons to gain power and added damage against the uh, unholy abominations that they face. Werewolves have gifts from the spirits that they work with able to sharpen their claws to be able to cut through steel, able to step sideways into the spirit world whenever they wish to, or other such abilities to lay low, enhance their senses, or do even greater gifts and things. Those types of abilities would not gather paradox because they work within the laws of reality. Mages, though, break those laws and rules by the, by the way they do things. Uh, Tarnheel asks, uh, so magic in this setting is more or less a force that's aware and doesn't like being used. Magic in this case, it, it's not necessarily that. Ma magic is dictated by the rules of consensus. People literally enforce reality because... Everyone believes a person can't chuck fire from their hands. The reality of the world says you can't chuck fire from your hands. 
if every back in the Middle Ages, people believed, of course, that uh, wizards could call down lightning. But that strange machine, there's no way that thing can fly. And thus, the flying machine that someone tried to build would get paradox and probably spontaneously explode because no one believes such a device could actually fly in the air. All of it is dictated by belief. By what the consensus of reality is and it is enforced by a very 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 powerful spirit that is known to the werewolves as the weaver sorry normally i would have uh, answered these questions but I don't fully understand it either right now, so. That's fine. That's what I'm here for. Also, you probably don't know this, too. In character, no, but I was meaning in the stream chat. Oh, oh I, I realize. Is there any other questions before we hop back in? None so far. So let's go ahead and continue. Nope. Alrighty. As I was saying, Frost, you would recognize this. This is someone you would have seen at the different gatherings for werewolves that you likely would have attended. He was actually the person who assigned you to watching over Cody and Reykjavik. Frost looks surprised at the news. And he he was devoted. He was devoted to Gaia, to the werewolf cause of protecting the world from the machinations of the destroyer, the being known as the worm, the corrupter. There's there's no way he would have ever done this. There's no way he would have ever taken his own life. But apparently, so Arik says to all of you, he ended up impaling himself on his own blade and killing himself. Ouch. The other two deaths actually happened recently. There was whispers last night, yesterday, that things were moving, but it seems no one actually died there. But it was a close thing. A couple of hun other hunters in the city nearly ended up dying, but it seems they were able to avoid ending up getting hit by a car. But then, this evening... At midnight, um, the leader of the Order of Hermes, Bren's Order of Mages, put a gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger. And then in the morning, at dawn, the vampire died and was incinerated in the, the light of the sun. Zaizan's going to pipe up here and say, I've actually heard about that. Well, most of these things happen in just from the Normies. Yes, it's, it's being written down as a missing persons case for the vampire. The other two, though, well, we have bodies for those. Okay, so a lot of uh, creatures are dying here. Um, I'm 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 not sure if you realize this, but uh, it's kind of our job to put those kinds of creatures down, usually. Mm-hmm. Problem sorting itself out.
but it's never that easy. Or rather, would we know, like, the two hunters here, would we know who any of these people are? Or, like, their purpose in the community and such? Uh, you would probably recognize the hunters. You might, you might have hunted with them before. They are two newer hunters. They are more or less kind of getting their feet. One is a defender and the other is a uh, innocent. They, they kind of work together trying to redeem and help monsters rather than kill them. But in the hunter community, it is not at all uncommon for a hunter to, you know, wind up dead. No, it kind of happens. Occupational hazard. Yeah. <clears throat> it's not a young man's game. It's not an old man's game. Hell, it's not even a game. So, what's the job, then? A combination, you could say. Multiple objectives. The first is figuring out who is doing this, and to stop them. The second... He pulls out his own phone, and, and types in a few keys for a moment, before each of you gets a text message. I sent each of you a map of the city. The locations of these deaths did not happen just randomly. They happened in specific places around the city, and where those deaths happened, when I looked into it, I have discovered there are holes in the Umbra, in the gauntlet. For those who do not know, that is the barrier between our world and the spirit world. And that is a very, very bad thing. So, more ghosts is what you're saying. Ghosts, what? spirits, monsters. God, I hate ghosts. There's so much paperwork that involves with them. Normally, you can read. I have stamps. You can read. I have stamps. He can. Wait, what? I didn't know he couldn't read. Why does everyone think I'm illiterate? Frost just laughs in the background. He's the he. Uh, I point to Frost. He's the one that taught me to read. Like, how am I? So you were taught how to read by a dog. Yes. Hey, it's not that weird. I was taught how to read by my dad's familiar. It was a penguin. See? Ooh, penguin. Anyway. See? Look. Not odd. You're odd. Not odd. Anyways... Where would you suggest we begin, then? I would likely recommend the vampire's death. That location is the most recent. If you can, seal the holes that were made. And you may need to pass through into the, uh, the Umbra in order to deal with it as well. If these holes are not closed, they may get larger and larger and larger. And if they do become too large, very, very dangerous things could begin coming through. Things that normally cannot pass through the wall separating our worlds. Right, perks up. It's like, oh, really? He pulls out his notebook. Such as... Creatures that can eat you alive with very little effort on their part. Things that have not been seen since the old mythic age of this world. Back before the Sundering. He writes down, uh, 
bad interdimensional demigods dash punchable question mark. Gotcha. Silent's going to pipe up and just ask, do you have any idea who could want this to happen? The, the, the issue is, I don't know what their goal is with this. I don't know why this is happening, and that is an issue. If I have more information, I might be able to divine what's going on, but right now I don't know who to trust. And with all of you, he eyes each of you as though he's looking through you rather than at you. I can see that each of you are meant for something great. Which is why I've asked each of you here to assist me with this. Well, I suppose uh, we might as well. Less work in the long run, I guess. Now, this uh, vampire uh, death, are, are we going to be going into an area where, you know, we're going to have to deal with very angry bloodsuckers? No offense, uh, any uh, gestures towards Sky. Oh, uh, none taken. And uh, Lord Byron can easily make it so that would not be the case uh, this a uh, death of a vampire especially in this light is very much uncommon and warrants investigation and being the most senior vampire in the area at the moment i do believe he could put together resources to make it seem like this group of misfits is the search party to try and find some just about anything that would explain why a vampire prince would just walk into the sun well all right then uh, any other information that might be helpful to us on this? What sort of information would you like to know? I might be able to offer it to you. I know how you uh, supernatural people tend to work. Um, I don't know the exact question to ask. So just, just, you know, share anything you think is useful. I, any idea of any of you spooky butts that could have done it? Mm, yes. I can think of a couple of hundred in the city alone who could do it. start cracking some heads get some answers but that may be more problematic in this situation than uh normal methods i would say investigate the site see if there's any clues and be careful we don't know who and what is causing this yet Cool. Look at murder scene, punch first, ask questions later. I can do that. The vampire died on the in the uh, north part of town at the edge of the public park there. 
he just from the security cameras footage that I was able to see, he was just walking into the uh, trees when it happened. How far away was this park from his normal uh, routine? About a 20 minute drive, give or take. Mm. Would that be considered out of the ordinary for this one? Yes, most most vampires give that park a very wide berth. It is widely considered to be the territory of the werewolves. I lean over to my brother and just whisper, I think we should investigate uh, his place too, just in case. I'd agree if we can uh, get clearance in there. It might, and he'll speak up a little louder, it seems like it might possibly be someone trying to cause an all-out war between the factions, then. Or a power struggle. People dying on all sorts of, uh... on all sorts of sides here, and trespassing into others' territories could be a problem. It's like mixing olive oil and milk. Cody will just uh, rub his eyes a little bit and sigh. I look very proud at that one. Just nod. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Just just shaking his head. Tyson's going to jump up to his feet and just hands in his pockets and just say, well... As informative and amusing as this is, and putting me off milk, shouldn't we go to the site? Yes, uh, why don't you all come down? Uh, I got enough room in my SUV for us all. Don't worry, he's riding on top. Andy points to uh, Randall. Yeah, but then how else can you guys enjoy such my witty humor? We'll crack the uh, skylight. <laughs> so blessed. Uh, <laughs> it would probably be better if we would go and take my chauffeur. I'm sure that any parking situations can be taken care of. Would that sound uh, good? While I appreciate the offer, um, we don't know what we're going to be dealing with, and I kind of have uh, tools, shall we say, in the uh, in my SUV. I just figure since we are going to be going into vampire territory it would be less conspicuous than having you guys show up in your own vehicles well we're actually headed to werewolf territory first were we? I thought we were going to vampires we're going to the park where he uh became Flambe, and that's werewolf territory. Ah. Pardon me, making note. That's fine. Just take both. You take your SUV. The rest of us will take another car. That way we've got backup. Yep. Yes, let's go investigate the toaster strudel. <laughs> the toaster strudel. That well, is going we'll, in his. We'll, we'll go uh, head down to the car and such. Uh, I I will make. I'm gonna, you know, not let Randall in. Frost ride shotgun. 
Uh, I put down the window for uh, Frost. While you're getting situated in your SUV, Bren kind of disappears and then comes around on a motorcycle, uh, kind of nodding and ready to go. It's kind of an old, beat-up one. Uh, the paint's kind of chipping. It's still serviceable, but it definitely shows its age and price by comparison. Darling! Darling! Where are you going? He waves and rides off. That sounded important! C Cody is, uh, is standing outside the SUV still and just looking over to the one coming out. As you see a man in extremely, extremely flamboyant clothing come dashing out, a hand over his chest. Darling! Darling, where are you going? Wait! We have so much to plan for the wedding! Wedding? Oh, you're getting married. Who are you getting oh. well, uh, Congratulations, I guess. I'm already driving off. I am gone. <laughs> I look, I look to the other guys like, you guys make an adorable couple. I'm <sighs> going to go and do something that I just really wanted to do. I'm going to point at the flamboyant whatever, and I'm just going to state silence. Uh, real quick, Sky, you do recognize him. He is also a Tremere vampire. I am absolutely going to say silence. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I'm assuming this is dominant domination? Yes. Alright, so what do you roll then for this? Let's see, that would be manipulation and intimidation. Make your roll, and I'm assuming I'm rolling his willpower against it? One second, reading, uh, da, 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 system. Player rolls manipulation plus intimidation. Difficulty equals the target's current willpower points. More success results a uh, greater duration. All right, make your roll. Uh, for everybody on stream, uh, you want to explain how dice rolls work in this? Sure. All right, so he has to make a dice roll here, as he just did. He rolls his manipulation plus his intimidation. Reroll that 10 for me. All right, so right now he had to roll his intimidation plus his manipulation, so that gives him six dice. Each dot is a dice when you roll them. And he has a target number he has to hit. So when he told me the difficulty is equal to the uh, uh, target's current willpower, this vampire's willpower is currently at five. Which means he needs to get at least a five or higher on the dice in order to succeed. And uh, tens, count as, I count them as two and you re-roll them. Um, so that 10, 7, 9, 6, and 8 all counts as successes. So you rolled six successes there on your roll. But yeah, we uh, only roll D10s in this game, as far as I'm aware. Correct. Uh, and yeah, it's... Basically, on our character sheets, we've got a bunch of dots, and each dot means one die. And then, I set the difficulty and the number of successes that you need to do. Depending on the situation, like if it's an easier situation, the difficulty is lower. You have to roll uh, a lower number. If the situation is more difficult, either you will need more successes on it, or you will need to reach a higher number, depending on how high it goes. <laughs> Responding, Martin. How long is he silenced for, Sky? 
Let's see, it says the duration is equal to successes it would be number of turns, so. She's going to be silent for like the next 45 seconds. Good, let's get out of here. <laughs> As you see him trying to open his mouth and he just does not respond. Silence. Blessed, blessed silence. I am very much content with this. <laughs> And you guys head off? Yes, yes, we do. Off you trot. Soon change. You guys make it to the park without any difficulty. It's fairly easy to find the spot that you guys were directed to. Uh, each of you have a map on your phone that you'd be able to look at to find the exact location. And Bren! You were the first to head out. You would be the first to arrive. You realize this location is where your little shrine is. Oh, why? I kind of keep my distance. Uh, I, I want everyone around just in case anything happens, but I'm definitely keeping my eyes and spiritual eyes out. How, are you actually using magic, or is this just, like, feelings and such? I'm trying to sense any magic, but that's it. Give me an Arate roll. So, for mages, in order to use magic, they roll their Arate, which is, for each of our mage players, three. And, holy crap! Please re-roll that ten. Um, yeah, this entire park lights up to you, but you sense a very specific kind of magic. Give me an occult plus intelligence roll, please. Coming right up. So... There's a couple of things I'm going to let you know here. So, on their character sheets, they have what is called a willpower roll. Or a willpower chart. They can spend points of willpower to either get automatic successes or to re-roll rolls. If you, more, if you roll more ones than successes, you have what is called a botch. Which is even worse than a uh, rolling a one in D&D. However... I am allowed to say, if you wish to spend a point of willpower, you may spend a point of willpower to re-roll this. And it's the entire roll, correct? Correct. Much, much better. <laughs> so, I'm going to tell, since our lovely viewers here, if he had kept that, that first roll, he would have totally thought the wrong thing and would have told everyone, yeah, it was totally vampire magic that did this. However, as you're thinking about it, you realize, no, no, wait, wait. No, this is, this is changeling magic. I'm going to bring out my little notebook and start writing in it as I look around the area and notice this magic. Um, you can see like a group of hanging vines between two trees, the vines of which look like they have small thorns on them. Um, with this roll, yeah, you have enough successes to know, with especially with your magic going. This is a pathway. This is a doorway right here. It is right next to your shrine. Just as the others begin to pull up and arrive. Uh, pathway as in like between the realms? Uh, you don't know that much about it. But you know this leads into what changelings call the hedge, which is the doorway between the world of the uh, 
chain or the fair folk, the ones who steal changelings and change them and our world. There's a whole little path and different little smaller worlds within the hedge for those who know how to travel it. And people can use those paths to go anywhere in the world if they know the right road to follow. The distance means nothing within that world. And there's also, so the rumors go that you've been able to hear about, there's also like entire communities that live within it as well. When everyone actually gets to the shrine, I am going to give them the gist of what was just said. Mainly uh, that it was changed by magic and that this is a pathway to the henge. At least that's what I believe. Also, on your small shrine itself, on the back of it, you can see there is a new mark edged into it. An upside down dagger entwined with vines with the uh, be- with a beautiful image of what looks to be a rose coming out of the pommel of the blade and it is pulsing with energy and magic Aizen's going to recognize the shrine, isn't he? Even if he doesn't know whose it is. Um, it seems to be like a small, well-tented shrine. Uh, you would need to give me an intelligence plus a cult roll. Do I know what the uh, changelings are? Should I do... Intelligence plus a cult. Right. I'll roll that too. Zizen, you totally think this is a shrine to uh, some deity of cats. Uh, Cody, changelings, you don't know that much about them. Usually they kind of police themselves and deal with themselves. They don't usually hurt people. Um, you don't really know that much other than the fact of when you see them, they look like all different manners of things. Like one could look like a living ice sculpture. The other one, another one could look like a walking, talking lion. A third could look like he's made of mechanical parts. A uh, fourth could look like the most fairest beauty in all the land, while a fifth could look like a living lightning bolt. While Rykovich, you know the changelings are victims. They are people who have escaped slavery and being twisted and transformed against their will into their current form by the beings that took them, known as the Fair Folk. Fair folk are horrifically powerful. They're like demigods and gods. And some say that they were some of the old gods. Um, and their magic is some of the most potent and powerful in the world. However, they can't survive for very long within our own world. Reality itself seems to hate them and tries to kill them when they come here. Mm. Mutual feelings. Cool. And like the legends, so the legends say, iron is their bane. Zizen, uh, you know of all about changelings. You live with the changeling sometimes. Your mentor is a changeling. You know all of this knowledge intrinsically. You have been taught this stuff by him. I'll relay what I know, what I know to my brother.
All right, and so there's a doorway here, which means one is probably in the world. We need to close this doorway. Do I have any ideas on how we might do that? Um, real quick. Zizen and Sky, both of you guys give me a perception awareness roll. Also, uh, Bren, you also sense another type of magic as well when you guys get when you actually get closer to the shrine. As curious as I am, what about his question about the pathway and closing it? Uh, this pathway will likely close naturally. It just takes time. Zyson, with that roll, you can sense something very, very bad here. There is a tear over the shrine. It's not visible, but you can sense it. It is open. If anyone went through it, like tried to climb on the shrine and move through it or jump over the shrine, they would go through the rift into the spirit world. And anything that came through the spirit world could come through this opening here. So, no one climb on that shrine. In fact, no one go near that shrine. I look at it like, just eye at it like, mm. No, do not. Frost growls at Reykjavik. I, I, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. As he just longingly looks at it. Just, just playing. I mean, I've been to this shrine many a times and it's been safe. Every single time I've come. There's a tear above it. And I don't know where it leads. But it would be very bad for anyone to go into it. And very bad things can come out of it. Didn't what's his face over at the club say that we needed to go through? Oh, you mean, uh, Dr. Scrubbing Bubbles? Yes, him. Yes. There's a tear into the spirit world. One of us tries to go through, they wouldn't come back out again. You guys would be able to go in and out. This is a two-way rift. It's just a matter of you're not exactly sure where it's going to, what the spirit world is going to be like on the other side. Uh, Zizen and Zizen, Frost, and probably just you two would know. Um, the spirit world, the near spirit world, the near umber as it's called, is mostly a reflection of our world. That's likely where this rift would take you. 
Yeah, but you don't necessarily know what the reflection of this area is going to look like over there. Like when you go into the spirit world, like say a house where a murder has happened, you might find the house over there covered with blood and skulls and completely run down and desiccated from the horrors and terrors that have happened. Where a place of goodness and peace, uh, it might be a very beautiful location. It's sort of kind of what the spiritual history of the location is can affect how it looks in the spirit world. Hmm. Well, Zizan probably knows this. He's just not keen on letting certain individuals run straight through and into it. Looks like I can pick. I don't know why you're all looking at me as he's just looking at it longingly, like a lot of love. Would a familiar be able to go in and out safely? Yes. Uh, I am going to. T- so I have a backpack on my. Uh, that I have on and I'm going to take it off and pull out a large rolled up piece of parchment laying it on the table Uh, it has runes and such etched on it and I will start a small little uh, chant to summon my familiar there is a puff of smoke before a man appears standing there He is dressed in a very fine black suit, and he bows gracefully to you. Greetings, Master. I saw that you had guests, so I wore the proper attire. What do you desire of me? Hey, can you poke your head in there and tell us how dangerous it is? (laughs) You'd be fine. We just want to know. It's anti-human, not anti-demon. Okay, let's uh, chuckle. Uh, Frost, you know this is a demon. Like, you can smell it on him. Frost stares down the familiar. He just has his hands behind his back as he kind of turns and regards the portal and stares. Oh, my. He looks over at you. Master! What have you been getting into without my knowledge? Honestly, I, I'm not sure whether to be proud of you, to smack you in the head, or to kiss you right now. Why, wow, you have been busy. You know, just the every night rifts, portals, zombies, and the wedding. Ah, uh, have you decided to take him up on that? As you see him begin to pace I, around I, the room. I push him in before he can <laughs> mention more about the wedding. As you see him vanish from sight. Uh, he's gone for about two minutes before he casually walks out. Um, There is a massive, massive temple upon the other side. I did not get close. It looked like it was guarded. But otherwise, it looked uh, quite similar to this location here. Bren kind of turns to everyone else. So, it won't kill us upon entering. Woohoo! I start heading towards it! Uh, I'm gonna uh, reach out to grab at uh, Randall's uh, shirt and then just stop before I actually touch the filthy thing. You know what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Precise and lets him go. So he's that's just, why you keep him around. He's, he's the fairy. Skipping. Just whistling Windisky to himself. Like, I'm walking on sunshine. Oh, oh. Get to punch me some things I don't even know. Ha ha. Does anyone else follow him? No. Not straight away. My familiar told me it was safe. I, I will follow a few seconds after. For size and follows. I 
Cody is going to go to his SUV and... Uh, what would I know about what's good against spirits? Uh, depends. It, if it's a ghost or if it's actually a supernatural spirit. If it's a supernatural spirit, like, probably what it sounds like, their weaknesses depend on what kind of creature it is and what type of spirit it is. Otherwise... Uh, it's sort of, uh, different for each one. He's gonna go and gather, uh, whatever he thinks would be the most common, uh, tools to use against, uh, as, as wide a variety of them as he can with, you know, five or so and stuff them into a duffel bag and bring it along. Maybe ten weapons. Okay. Yeah, you know conventional weaponry can hurt spirits when they're manifested. <clears throat> as far as Sky is concerned... He's been standing back this whole time seeing what they were all doing and he's going to, was pulling out a couple firearms from the trunk of the car just the pretty standard looking 9mm as well as several different types of ammunition since I'm unsure of what would be needed as well as just a single pretty basic looking assault rifle with just one clip if all else should fail <laughs> okay uh, right gets up to the portal puts some uh some rings on his knuckles cracks them and then does a cannonball okay as you pass through the portal you feel a slight shiver as you come out into a forest that looks to be even larger and standing before you is a massive massive stone temple that looks to have been lovingly and beautifully maintained and you can see two guards in front of it. Um, they are clad in what looks to be golden brown armor. And they look like tall animals of some sort. He. They look oh, like noodles. Almost. Gotcha. Brown for noodles. <laughs> I'm under myself like, damn, I wonder what the property value on this place is. Oh, look, yep. doggies! Each of them has a shield and a uh, spear in their hands. Ooh, well armed, doggies. Even better. And I'm gonna. Do they, see, like, how, like, line of sight, can they see me or no? Oh, they can see you, and you can see them. You sort of came out, like, 20 feet in front of them. Oh, I wave. Hello! You see them kind of share look with each other before one of them kind of lifts his spear a little bit towards you, as though he's kind of confused. Hi, how are you? I was wondering if you've heard our of our Lord and Savior Kibbles and Bits. If you have a uh, moment in time. I, I come through the portal and since he didn't move much, kind of uh, bump into him and stumble to the side. My jacket is wet for some odd reason. And not like water wet. Uh, I thought this was cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can clean. My uh, smell is back. Bren? When you come through, you see both of them 
immediately lower their spear and shields to the ground and bow, dropping to one knee and lowering their heads to you. I think I could get used to this. <laughs> Ooh, fancy! Mm. Uh, shall we wait for the others, or would you like to go exploring alone? Oh, I am all for some exploring. This... This is definitely going in the book. You, you see one of the guards whisper to the other one, and the first one stands and quickly rushes into the temple. Mm, that's either really good or really bad. You know, I trust my luck that it's good. I don't trust mine. <laughs> I'm gonna tighten the rings on my finger. Like, mm, just in case. Some of my special fighting punchy rings. Hmm. Sky would just casually saunter through the portal just observing what was around. Yeah, this is a very large forest, and you can see a very large, beautifully cut stone temple. And in front of it is one animal-like guard, its body very slim, almost noodle-like. Uh, Mammalian is clad in brown and gold armor, and currently its weapons are resting on the ground. It is bowing towards the mage here. It's always mages. Why are mages always responsible for this stuff? I don't I... know. It's like they're always bored. I did nothing here. I just enjoy reading my books and doing odd jobs. Dyson's going to have come through the portal as well. His preparation while everyone gathering up guns and weapons and such was, of all things, to grab out from his backpack a little plush wolf toy and a piece of chalk which he sticks behind his ear. I... Cody will come in uh, carrying the duffel bag. And uh, kind of take a look around. So... Cody, I won't even make you roll. Your animal can is so high. These are Martins. Oh, well, hi. They're big anthro ones, or... Yep. I want one. <laughs> Hey, they're bowing to you. Can can you have one of them, you know, follow me home? There Frisco. was like five of us here. How did you know they were to me? Why does everyone assume it's me? It's your luck. Frost came in whilst Cody was saying that and looks sort of dejected. It's okay, Frost. You're still my favorite. Hey, Fantoki, you and Fantokio get along just fine as well. You have already named it. I mean, I already have one at home. I know the little carpet hamster. He's He barely spends any time on the floor. Yeah, unless he's trying to steal my sandwich. Little rat bastard. Well, he's just trying to help you with, uh, you know, keep that pudge down. <laughs> I am all muscle. <sighs> Frost shakes his head in disagreement. Uh, I am going to kind of walk closer to the temple and look down the hallway because one of the guards did run off trying to see anything. 
It looks like he is running deeper into the temple before he vanishes from sight. Uh, uh, Cody is going up to the one that's still outside and bowed down. So, hi there! How would you like to come home with me? I got sandwiches? For Sears, perk up with the mention of food. What kind of sandwiches? I didn't get to eat anything back at the place. They forgot to bring meals with the drinks. I'll offer him some pocket jerky. They may or may not be covered in echoplasm. That Martin looks like pretty good food. You lay one all... finger on this Martin, and I will shoot you myself. Frost just chomps on Rock of Exand holding the jerky. Uh, good boy! Pet, pet! The Martin warrior looks up. Uh, sandwiches are good, however, I have duty to my uh, lord and god. You're missing out some gray A pocket jerky over here. I, I got eggs too. I got eggs at home. Oh, we lost someone. Did we? No, I think we weren't still here. No, on on fantasy grounds, we lost um, we lost Reykjavik. Oh, my fantasy grounds crashed. Huh. Okay, completely aside, is anybody else getting a Men in Black vibes here? Oh, totally. Good, as long as it's just not me. I, I don't care really what good. we They're... have to do. This one's coming home with me. I don't think he wants to do that, and it can be very dangerous. I don't even know if they would have stable forms out there. Are Look they at even him! House He's trained? too adorable! <laughs> Frost just walks off. <laughs> Tail between his legs. I'll, I'll still pet- I'll scratch him behind the ears. It's okay. The next chance we get, you can attack him. I'll distract him. <laughs> Frost perks up a little bit at that. Don't worry, Lord Fluffykins, you're still very important, too. But look at him! Frost looks dubious. I... So, uh, what... Uh, I, I turn to the guard. What is this place if you, um... Y you know, I'm, I'm seeing if you know. Hey, I'm trying to a picture on our Discord real quick. Just imagine this in armor. <laughs> and bigger. Oh, sorry, I'm still picturing it that size in armor. Yep. Yeah, it's not <laughs> working. Some palatromes, cauldrons, little shield and sword. I'm posting it in Tabletop Image channel on the Discord, and I'll also bring it up on stream. It's actually not real armor, it's just in cardboard and a paper cup. I was just thinking that! <laughs> so adorable. Puppers? Yeah, yeah, this one's coming home with me. <laughs> Have good good luck house training it. I'm walking away with Frost. I I now want to retroactively change these to be the size of real Martins. That just makes it easier to, for him to steal them. Okay, you convinced me. Retroactively changing it, these are actually the size of Martins. What have you done? You have doomed us all. 
Oh yeah, that works. <laughs> uh, there was another picture posted in Discord. All right, so three tens. So that would be tens count as two, right? Yes. So two, four, six, seven, seven, seven minus, minus one, six. Six, six, six successes. Uh, that's animal kin plus uh, charisma. <sighs> All right, tell me what you're going to do. Also, look at the second picture in the Discord. Oh boy. I would just like to state that is a ferret, not a Martin. I know, but it's so cute. I think they would interchangeable armor. I posted it in tabletop image. By the way, Timmy, you can post in tabletop image as well for things like this. Okay. So yeah, uh, I, I'm going to uh, pull out one of the sandwiches I've got in my uh, in my duffel bag. I, I always make sure that I have you know sandwiches on hand uh, because you know buying on the road is uh, very expensive, and I'm already supporting one person. I, I, I need to save a little bit of money. As you see his head whip around, eye the sandwiches. Come on, little guy. You can have these. You can have so much more. All you just gotta do is just come on home with me. I have to see here. Okay, okay. I will talk with your, uh, you know, the one that you have duty to and see about getting you released from that to come with me. Whilst this is going on, Frost is just sneaking up on Cody, his eyes on the sandwiches. As you hear, bang, 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 footsteps coming. Oh, as the big one. As the other little uh, margin from before comes prancing out before from the large doorway of the temple which is easily like 20 or 30 feet uh, tall a 15 foot martin a 15 foot martin clad in brilliant golden armor his Beautiful golden fur shimmering in the light as he comes out, towering over all of you, before he looks at Bren and bows to him. Deep, very, very deeply. Cody is staring at this uh, Martin, and he, uh, it's basically... Honestly, his expression is very much like Mabel when she first saw the uh, pig that I can't remember the name of from Gravity Falls. Oh, yes. Yeah. He's like, I don't know how, but you will be mine. <laughs> Bren is going to nervously kind of back up some, r raising a hand in like a nervous hello, trying to hide behind the wall of hunters and vampire. I don't seem impressed. Greeting, so savior. It is so amazing to actually see you step forth into our world. I promise you all, I have no idea what's going on. Are you sure? 
I I'd be okay with you having something to do with this. As long as it means you can make him come home with me. No. <laughs> um, uh, hi. We were here because some stuff happened recently and uh, we thought it would affect over here as well or have came from here. I promise you, O oh Great One, that no damage was caused from us. Did, did you see anything uh, weird in the nearby areas or in your temple here? We did feel the distortion earlier today when the Great Hole was here. That is why I have guards posted to watch over it. Um... It was done by what appears to be a mortal child, is what we saw. They, he carved an image into our temple. Bran is going to attempt to sketch uh, the image he saw down in his notebook. To show to the Martin? He nods his head, yes, that is it. He, he's going to show everyone else. Do you guys have any idea what this is? Uh... Cody is too enraptured by the uh, large Martin that he, he just can't even look away right now. I'll be looking at the picture. Would What's I know this? what this is? Uh, cult plus intelligence roll. I get a feeling like I might. Yep, anyone who wants to look at it can try to make a uh, perception or intelligence plus a cult roll. Frost is too focused on the sandwich in Cody's hand. <laughs> a cult plus intelligence, alright. Oh, wait, no, that was the right one. Okay, I didn't botch. Sky, two successes. One, two, three. Rekovich. This seems to be some sort of spiritual, spiritual sigil. But you're not exactly sure what it means. Mm -hmm. It's like a spiritual sigil of some sort, but meaning of it? No freaking idea. Yeah, I kind of had the same. Uh, I know it's something. It It was there, but as for what that something is... Yeah. I mean, for all we know, it could say toilet that way. I doubt someone would have desecrated a spiritual temple in the Umbra just to mention where her toilet is. Obviously, you've never been part of a hunter bender. It's been, from my own knowledge, it is meant to channel great power somewhere. Hmm. Hey, hey, kid, hey, kid, um, he point goes over to his eyes, and you seem to know more about this place than me. You recognize there's a rift here. Do you think destroying that sigil could close the rift? All I know, when it comes to magic, trying to do something simple, very, very rarely works out for anyone.
Well, maybe for your magic, but mine is quite simple indeed. Thank you, though. Uh, is there an area in the temple that has been changed? Yes, within it. We're currently, uh, we've sealed off that area right now. Changed how? We've been dealing with an encroachment of vines and other strange spirits that we've been having to keep under control. Hmm. Is that something that's usually unusual, rare? Very. This has never happened to us before. Mm. Though, to be fair, as he looks at uh, Brandon Bows, we had nearly faded away before he came along and restored us. Good job. Gives him a thumbs up. Uh, thanks. I didn't even know I did so. It's the best kind. Involuntary helping. Yeah. Sison's going to perk up. Just ask this. That shrine was yours? Mm -hmm. Were you saying that to uh, me or the, um... The to you. I found it. It was very, very old. Uh, there was a small node there and I started tending to the shrine to show respect to whatever left the node. <laughs> Apparently it was giant carpet snakes. Uh, Cody's gonna pick up the smaller one. Tell if they touch him, he's poisonous. Hey, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> I, I heard you do the... <laughs> t t I thought you were uh, talking to one of the cats. No. no. <laughs> You're just so adorable. I am a fierce, powerful warrior. Yes, and you can help us in our fights. But I'm a bodyguard. Okay. Okay. You bodyguard, bodyguard. me now. And the litter box. But I I serve my lord. The the the, the very large bar just looks kind of amused by all of this. It's okay. I've got you now. Here, have this. And I'm holding out the sandwich uh, very close to his muzzle. Frost jumps and eats the sandwich. Yeah, good boy. That's okay, I got another. I'll pull out is another it, one. Is that considered kidnapping? Martin napping? Is that a thing? What's the bylaws here? Frost it's eats that sandwich, that. dude. Uh, this guy will just silently go up beside Ray Rick and be like, Is he always this dense? Oh, you come up to me, talking to him. When it comes with these little fuzzy creatures, yeah. I see. Should, uh, take notes on this. Yeah. It... It's a good distraction tool, except for you can't really hold them. I think they're made out of pure liquid, and I can't figure it out yet, but I will. I will discover the secrets of the Martins one day. They're interesting creatures. They 
remind me of the noodles that they throw into that soup? No. I can't remember what it's called. Ramen? No. That'll come to me at some point. Uh, Riz Farn, yeah, kind of. Why did I say Riz Farn? Cody pulls out a uh, two more sandwiches, tossing one to uh, Frost before holding the other for the Martin. Frost eats that sandwich and tries to go for the one for the Martin. Uh, Cody will give uh, Frost a uh, very angry glare go when he goes for the uh, fourth one. Frost looks slightly guilty. <laughs> you have had enough. This is for him. Now oh, come on, little guy, eat up. Does this count as bribing an official? Maybe? I didn't know spirits could eat food from our realm. says they're actually spirits. I am the great and powerful god of Martins. So no one actually really worships anymore except for him. But his worship gave us strength and power again and saved us from fading away. I will worship you. <laughs> Cool. I'll tend the shrine every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, we can have alternate in Saturdays. All right, uh, Randall, we're moving. <laughs> I'll, I'll build a house around the shrine. Uh. Sure. I mean, I sleep on your couch, so it doesn't really matter to me. No, you're in the guest house, which I'm probably going to have to burn to the ground afterwards. Fire will not cleanse that, what I have left. So you admit you're filthy. I, it is a tactical ability for bog witches. Yes, and it's a disadvantage for Everything else. Am I a little sticky? Sometimes. Do I leave wet puddles where I walk? Maybe. Do I stink? No. Yes. Hey, mages. Do you guys, do you guys know anything to uh, fix this sense of smell? Uh, I'm going to try use some of my magic, uh, to have it where his senses, uh, it makes it thinks he has a cold or something, so his nose clogs up. There's a roll. Are you doing this? Like, like, trying to, tr uh, trick his like body uh the like senses in the mind to make it think that he has a cold or a bacteria is attacking uh to activate the natural immune system that is a stuffy nose yeah uh, you begin to feel like you have a stuffy nose i think it's some allergies um, here it's probably the dust from that uh, weasel you're holding, which we just can't have him anymore. I am not a weasel. I am a glorious warrior, Martin. He I is a me. wonderful uh, Martin, and you should apologize to him for such an insult. I meant as doing that on Cody so he can't smell you. <laughs> oh, forgive me, great carpet snake. How wrong I was. Just as a side thing, I'm imagining the guest house 
the spirit world around it's kind of messed up because of the smell <laughs> and everything. It's like a mini hell dimension. It's a bog. It's it's just a swamp with decaying plants. <laughs> what did you do to here? God doesn't even know. It's more God doesn't want to know. <laughs> I'm like that mess you shove in the closet when guests come over. Perhaps... Is there something we can offer assistance to with you, sir, as he's looking at Bren? We would like to pay you back for you saving us. Tell them to let me take this one. I would like to be shown the way to the changes in your temple and might request to call upon you guys in my realm every now and again. That is more than adequate, sir. We would be more than willing to show you everything that you wish, as well this as one, assist you. This one needs to come with! Nibbles, nibbles on sandwich. I have money! <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think they sell themselves off. Oh no, no! You! You could use money, can't you? More than you know, I'm in debt after having to pay off the fine for my motorcycle. <laughs> I can make that go away with one call. You just, just ha let me take this one. That's, sir, that is an abuse of power. It is a good abuse. Chris just shakes his head disapprovingly. <laughs> you know, I'm normally one for rules. I really am. If I make deals, I, I keep them. Is that guy able to come with? Like, is he is? Can he be relieved of guard duty? If you desired it. I could see about yes, as being your guard. No, no, I, I want. I want him. Mine. Can this guard guard him? He is important to me. If that's what you desire, yes. I suppose I can have one of my men go with you and guard you. And guard the people you desire. Frost just grins knowingly. I Cody is knowingly. squeeing right now. Frost and I have the same look. This guy just goes and looks at the cathedral and the architecture while all this is going on it's just make a will of horror weird. roll a what will of horror roll ah uh, not a will power roll a um, uh, quick question as they go roll it is that based off your current willpower or max willpower uh current Here, th this is uh, Cody right now. You, you do not get enthralled with the beautiful architecture, the absolutely beautiful architecture on the uh, of the temple. I sure hope not. Uh, the manor looks so much nicer than this. I'm surprised I ever managed to leave. beautiful it is very very nice so little guy do you have a name um 
I'm a Martin. Huh, <sighs> that won't work. Uh Well, I got Fan Tokyo back at the house. Uh you Hmm. We need Strami. to give you a good name. No. No. Really? Yes, you deserve a name. I looked at Frost. Strawberry's a good name, right? I assume that's what it would taste like. Frost just nods. <laughs> we vote for pastrami. You don't get a say. How about Mercury? That's not a bad name. Well, let's see. We already got Lord Fluffykins. We got Fantokyo. Frost Grouse. I know. I'll call you Frost. <laughs> Frost Grouse a lot more. <laughs> I... Wright just puts his hand up to his mouth trying to hide the, the uh, snicker that Frost won't pick up on. You're being replaced by a garbage disposal. <laughs> now I gotta think of garbage disposal names. <laughs> <laughs> that was in character. Fine, fine, no frost. How a about hmm I will call you Kale Okay Excellent all right That what sounds was that? oddly familiar. Yes, of course it does. Hmm. I've heard that name somewhere. Oh, well. <laughs> anyway. Well, yeah, we there was this uh, great YouTube series. Uh, it, it was Rooms and Reptiles. You watched it with me. Oh, that that yes. Eric guy, he uh, he named his uh, familiar uh, Kale. So you know, I found his combat ability lacklustered. No, no, Kale was great. Eric's, yeah, but he was mostly the healer. Ah, uh, both are <coughs> minus. So okay. then just clears his throat loudly. Okay, okay. I mean, yes. That rock rock guy, that was your favorite. Uh he was he was obviously the best in combat, but the others had versatility. This conversation continues for a while in the background. Yeah, it does. I like playing in a world that's basically ours because now I can drop things like that and actually have them be canon to the world. For those that don't know, that was our, one of our old D&D campaigns that we streamed. <laughs> Overproof, this is a fantasy. Can we, in, uh, in mid-conversation, as he's talking about the finites of teeth collecting, I'm going to look towards the uh, bigger Martin dude. Is there a possibility I can look at the room that you sealed off? Yes, that's what we were going to lead you to. Ah, yes. Tally-ho! As you head off... End of session.
Well, all right. Yeah, this is where we're going to be ending here. So this is a good ending spot because you guys are about to get into combat soon. And it might take a long while to get through that combat. Combat. True. Yay. Did you guys have fun? Extremely so. Had a blast. Time for yeah, happy fun, fun times. I got to do. I got to eat sandwiches, so I'm happy. <laughs> I got my debts paid off. <laughs> I got to go jump through an interdimensional portal to a spooky world. Oh, good times. I mean, it's not really so much that. Uh, it's not really so much a. They're being paid off as I just make a call to the right people and they just go away. I don't know that. I just know <laughs> I don't got to pay him now. Give me that one. All right, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us. This is, uh, I guess it's not quite evening yet. Uh, thank you for joining us today for our first stream of Darkest Dreams World of Darkness. I will be back in a little bit with uh, some more streaming, so do stick around for that. Check out our website, ZGFGaming.com. We got links for our Discord, Telegram, Twitter, Patreon, all those things there on the website as well as down in the description below. Thank you to my patrons, donators, and subscribers. I am streaming full-time now, and it is because of all of you that I'm able to continue bringing these streams uh, to you all. Please consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. You can find a link to that down in the description as well. And consider supporting the channel. Every little bit helps and goes a very long way to helping us uh, continue bringing these streams to you all. But for now, thank you for joining, and I bid you all the most fundest adieu. See you shortly. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you, thank you all for coming. See you, See you soon, everyone.